Alright! Yeah! Alright! We are on the TV! We are two, two, two monsters. Okay. But it's the, in a good way, yes. alright? Two monsters. <laughs> no, I don't believe in Saturn, but two monsters. Why yeah, why not? Germany versus. San Francisco. <laughs> Bay Area. Right. All right. Bay Area. Fight! Alright, so this is, uh, of course, the Thrash Metal Fest. Is it right? Thrash Fest. Thrash Fest 2010. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time now. We played a we played a couple of festival shows back in the day. Way back Maybe in the two day. Two or three. Yep. <laughs> yep. We never toured together though. Should have. Early, way earlier. This should have happened ten years ago. Exactly. Uh -huh. Easy. So you don't know this guy for? I've known him. I've known no? him. Yeah, uh -huh. I've known him forever. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I think we went to each other's shows like. He came to the Stone a couple yeah. of times, I came to Fenders, whatever. I came to Bochum, to Düsseldorf. Düsseldorf with Assassin. Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh -huh. Friends of mine. So, and, of uh, course, let, let's talk about thrash metal in general, because uh, there are two, two schools, I would say. Yeah. The US school <laughs> and the German school. So yeah, uh, the, 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 in, the, the German school was influenced by the American and vice versa, maybe? Yeah. What, what would you say that... Uh, um, the thrash metal, where, where does it come from, in fact? From the US, from Germany, for no, it was all It was a worldwide phenomenon, right? It I think so. Only, it wasn't only in the Bay Area. Exactly. It was, it was, the, 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 only, the only places where it really got noticed was, you know, I don't know why that is, but there's been great thrash metal bands, for example, Brazil. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. When, when, when Sepultura came out, everybody would laugh at them. In Germany, they would get the worst fucking reviews. Mm -hmm. They would say, like, fuck, this is shit, you know, like two, two points out of ten and stuff yeah. like that. And now, you know, it, it, was, it always seemed like it was only in San Francisco and Germany or, you know, American Germany, but there was bands in Poland, even. Mm -hmm. you know, Vader, they've been around at the time. And there's been many bands worldwide. But the most recognized ones that were the ones that had a record deal and we were yeah. lucky. Yeah. You know. It was definitely the, the, the German scene and the California basically Bay Area scene. That, those were the main ones. But they pretty much happened around the same time. And you know, prior to that there was also some New York fans. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's true. But, uh, overkill and yeah. uh, you know contracts obviously. But Cunningham, just kind of yeah. the one yeah. The one the main concentrations always seemed like those were the two areas that were focused on. But as far as where it got born, you know, it's, it was, I mean, I think it was just metal fans that were, you know, on both sides of the globe that were fans of, like, new wave of British heavy metal. Mm -hmm. And this taking it to, you know, the next level. Pretty much simultaneously. Yeah. Because, you know, you wanted to take it to that. It's just kind of a natural progression for music. You, like, you want to do it a little faster, a little more yeah. technical. You know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> exactly what, how it was. We were not, like... There was uh, there, there there was so many bands coming out like every almost like every other week there was something new exciting coming mm -hmm. out from somewhere some corner of the world and we start we try to top that you know when we heard a great riff on a Death Angel record we try to write a better riff <laughs> <laughs> you know that's that's how it, it is a, friend, right? a friendly rivalry makes yeah. for you know better music yeah, yeah, for yeah, everyone yeah. but not only but it was also like you know of course we, that was a huge influence you know because we were when we started. We weren't such great musicians, uh -huh. and I, I learned from Gary Hole. You know, he would he would write the best riffs at the time, and um, and of course I tried to make my own version of that and uh, come up with something just as exciting. So, what was the idea in the eighties? Play fast, play you know more aggressive than the, the heavy metal style, a new. From Britain or I remember there was a time where I didn't like my heavy old heavy metal records, what they, which was stupid. Yeah, all of a sudden, <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't heavy enough or fast uh, enough. There, there was a part where I, I was like, to oh, this is not heavy enough. <laughs> uh, uh, Black Sabbath, ah, oh, that's not heavy enough. <laughs> and then you go back to it. You yeah, know? you definitely. Um, uh, but then again, you got to see like, I mean, Priest at the time. 87, 88, they weren't, they weren't the best priests out no, at the time. No, definitely not. Then Painkiller came yeah. and that was heavily influenced by Thrash. Mm -hmm. Completely, you know? <laughs> Completely agree. Completely <laughs> agree. So yeah, it's, uh, it's odd, you know, and I think that's kind of what it was even, you know, in California as well. It was just, you know, that friendly competition of everyone who was coming out at that same time. Um, you, you, you'd go to each other's shows and you'd see the stuff that was going on and people did want to play 
you know, whether it be heavier, faster, or just more technical. And then at points, um, we jumped to the severe left from what was happening in San Francisco at the time. And, you know, it kind of isolated us for a bit. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I told you earlier that I thought those albums were influential for other bands. No, yeah, they were. Man, 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 they were. If you think about it. Is it art, in fact, to to stay? You know, so it's the, the creator birthday, 25 years. Is it art to 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 stay on the on the on the front? I would say of the. It's, the it's, a, it's a, of course it's always like ups and downs. Yeah. And if you're not prepared, you're gonna go down because you you got you, you know it's it's like with, in real life. Mm -hmm. If you fall into a crisis and you start whining, you will stay in that fucking crisis. But if you you know, think positive mm -hmm. and try to get out of the fucking crisis. You get out of it stronger. At that time, the Death Angels played yeah, a long time ago, then you, you came back. Yeah. And uh, so maybe you were too young in the business because you, you were very, very young when you started uh, the band. Well, yeah, we were extremely young when we started the band. I don't know if it was too young for the business. I think it was just um, more too ignorant for the business at the time. That being that, that, you know, you got kids who never dealt with, or their families, parents who never, you know, dealt with anyone in the music industry, and all of a sudden we were getting all this attention, and then labels started coming to us and approaching us with their, you know, actual attorneys that were knowledgeable <laughs> about the music industry, and we just went to the phone book <laughs> under attorney, oh, entertainment, you know, and they just had a field day with our attorney, so we ended up signing a bunch of things that we shouldn't have, just out of being naive. Why yeah. you with Epic for a while? Um, no, we were with uh, Enigma first, and then... Oh, you had to make yeah. your record. And then Geffen. Thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, they give you, we had the same experience. There was a time when all of a sudden the, um, the underground music got a lot of recognition from the major record industry mm. in, in America. So you were with Geffen, we yeah. were with Epic Records, and they put out one album, <laughs> promoted it very well, and then it didn't probably didn't sell enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they were used to their you know they were used to one million, and all exactly. of a sudden you know with this underground music we sold a lot more than with the other ones that came out on Noise Records, but we probably didn't sell enough for um, you know. Mm -hmm. Whatever mm -hmm. they expected us to sell, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we didn't sell as much as our label mates, Guns and Roses. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> and you were talking, Milia, about uh, up and downs in your career. What, what are the? Uh, it's hard, you know, to to sum up 25 years of music. But what what are the, the best up and down in your career? Well, my first major up would be the day the ultraviolence came out on vinyl and the first time I ever held it. That's probably my first major up. Uh, down would be getting, you know, news about bad contracts that we'd signed. Yeah. <laughs> up putting out Act Three. Down the bus accident after Act Three and then yeah. the hiatus. Up reforming. And, um, and no downs still. <laughs> you know, no, there were some downs. There oh, were right. some downs because you know, and then losing Andy and Dennis was a big down. But now the the triumphing over that, and you know, replacing them and putting out an album that we're more proud of than any album that we put out since we've you know reformed with new members and touring more consistently than we ever have in our career to me is the biggest up there is. And mm. now it's just like we're on we're on fire right now. And, and uh, this is the same lineup for Creator for more than ten years with the with the arrival, ar arrival of uh, Sammy in the band. Yeah, which is so, good. Huh? Tommy was was a good guitar player, but he was just not the right person for for the vibe of the band. You know, we need in the band. It's it's not only the the, the, the skills, and it's not only like how good you are as a musician. It's also you have to you have to be able to 
kind of attached to the to the to the to the vibe of the band. Mm -hmm. And if you're um, Tommy is great, like I said, he's a great player, but he's just with his ego and the way he's mm -hmm. working and the way he's seeing things didn't quite match with what we had in mind. And uh, so, like technically, it was it was really there, but emotionally, there was something mm -hmm. missing. And since uh, Sammy has been for ten years, um, there is a revival because you you used to to explore new worlds yeah. the the outcast and, and the Rama yeah. albums which you, you were very criticized yeah. in a, in a in a bad way because you were not playing the what the, the people want yeah. to play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know that story too well. <laughs> you are supposed to play this. Yeah. <laughs> not this. <laughs> Yeah, I, know. I, 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 totally, I, I totally understand, you know, people get disappointed with Endorama and um, and Outcast. I think those albums had good songs, but also had some bad songs. It was an experiment, like you said, and I don't regret it. It was uh, definitely an experience. And for us, it was like um, very, very, very important to write Violent Revolution and Enemy of God and mm. now Hot to Chaos because it was a musical experience. And if you don't make that experience, uh, you might. And your music starts like you, 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 there's just going to be a block for for your creati creativity because you, mm -hmm. you never never tried things and you actually turn turn circles and that's what I don't want you know I don't want creator to be a band that that just plays um, I don't know that repeats it itself and mm -hmm. doesn't play exciting songs anymore. This story was Critics are important, but fans are the most important. Yeah. You do agree? No. I agree, absolutely. Maybe, maybe and critics self, are not and self satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, you have to you have to balance all those things. I mean, if you, if you're a musician, you, I would lie to you if I would say that it doesn't matter at all if some critics. But then again, sometimes you shouldn't listen to it. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you really feel a certain way, that's. Otherwise, you're, you, you're lying to yourself, you're lying to the audience, you're not doing what you feel, and that's when music becomes like a, not art, but uh, something that you, like, like a product, you know? Mm -hmm. you know, so we don't want that. Do you read the, uh, the critics, the, the newspaper about Death Angel, and uh, especially on, on the new album, Relentless Retribution? Did you? Did I read? Yeah, yeah, I read a few, yeah, of course. And what are, what are the feedbacks? Uh, the feedback actually, for more or less, has been pretty much all positive. You know, there's a few people that uh, didn't like it, but it's, it's, it, the, more, the positives outweighing the negative, so I'm fine with it. But you know what, tell you the truth, I'm so proud of the album that the negative doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. It's a, tri <laughs> it, it, it's a triumph for me that it came out, that it was written and it came out, so. You know, because I feel, you know, anger, you know, uh, you're not too old, but you know, I feel in both bands, you know, anger, energy for a lot, for decades. So, how do you, how yeah, do you find this but, 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 but energy? How do, how, what do you want? What do you expect? I mean, it's not like to me, age doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, if it's, as soon as you start thinking about your age, or you go like, I'm too old for that, then that's the moment when you're too old. you are too old, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, so, to me, I don't feel I, honestly. I don't feel much different than 20 years ago. Mm. Of course, I'm older, but I'm, I don't feel much different. Yeah, I, it's the greatest discovery that ever happened in my life. Yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. me, um, you know, it does. It keeps you young because you just, you, you feel it and it's a passion, you know. And one thing, you, you know, if I may even make jokes about it, oh, I'm getting old. But I always say, but you know what? I'm young on stage. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> when I'm on stage, you can't take anything away from me. That's just like, that's my time. Of course, it's, it's, it's a little harder to keep, keep on, in physical shape. Yeah. You, have to, you have to work a lot harder. Exactly. You know, you have to do more um, 
work out. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that, 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 that we didn't have to do 20 years. No, exactly. You know, we could just <laughs> and, and eat, eat, eat potato chips all day. Nowadays, it's a little harder to keep like oh, yeah. in shape. You know, but my knees know. might hurt a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing, you know what? I honestly think that the music that it is, it is such. It tends to be, you know, a more aggressive style music. But that's the great thing about you know some of the topics I do write about, especially on the last album, it was things I was angry about. And one thing I can honestly say about this music is people who are friends of mine and people who run into me all the time, they just say to me like all the time, like, why are you always so happy? You know, and the main, the main reason is is because I have an outlet. I have such an amazing outlet that's not harmful to anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and namely me, I get it out every night. Every night I get that out of me. So it just makes me, you know, some people are walking around and they, just, they have no way to take yeah. out their frustrations. And me, every night, I'm like, ha, healed, <laughs> healed, you know, <laughs> done. And I am happy. Music calls Karazis, in fact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel when you when you finish a show? It's you know, the, to be honest with you, it's not always easy to be on tour because sometimes you, you know you, you just there's so much time to kill until until you get on stage. Sometimes it's a little boring. Sometimes you get a cold and you 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 know you should be in bed. But then on the other hand, you know, for this one hour and thirty minutes that we are on stage every night, it's worth it. It's worth the wait. It's worth the struggle. It's worth the um, um, whatever you know, the, the snow in in Prague. Hearing that <laughs> same fucker's voice again, day after day after day, <laughs> yeah. year after year yeah. after year, hearing that same guy's voice over and over again every day. Yeah, but it's but, but it's I love him. But, yeah, but it's worth it, you know. It's it worth is. it. I mean, it's the music that keeps us going, I guess. You know, other than, and if you if you look in the in the first in the front row and there's really like like Mark said earlier that there's like young kids and not only the young kids but the old people that have been there and supporting the band since you know whatever 85 86 and they're still there and still enjoy it and it's like something that can be yeah it's, it's a great feeling you know and it keeps you going so we're talking about the past the present and now of course the the future for a creator because my little finger told me something yesterday what? We're still talking <laughs> about a new recall level, something new for you. Yeah, Maybe. Nuclear Blast. We're all in Nuclear Blast. Everybody, everybody is on Nuclear, on Nuclear Blast now because it's the only label nowadays that you can still talk, where you can still talk to the people. Mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of trust. I, I put a lot, of, and I think Mark will agree on that as well. You can trust those people because they are, those people are metal people. True. Met, they're total metalheads, you know, and um, I think they, they they know exactly what to do to promote. The band, so we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. You know, with another with different other labels, sometimes you have to give them ideas. You know, give them like a little bit of input on how, how you should how they should run things. And with Nuclear Blast, I don't think it's necessary. So you can concentrate on the music a lot more. So with our a new album in next year, two to two twelve. Yeah, twelve. Yeah, twelve. All right. And what's the future for Death Angel, except touring, touring and touring? Touring like mad for this album, like mad, like we've never toured for any other album. And starting the, um, the goal is to start the writing process for the new album starting January already yeah. and just kind of write on the road. And so when we actually do finish however long this touring cycle for this particular album is going to be, to get back, take a break from each other, <laughs> then, you know, come back and start really you know, fine-tuning those songs and hopefully just, you know, being a well-oiled machine that tours, release an album, tour, release an album, and we won't be plagued with the hiatuses that have happened to us since we reformed ever again. All right! So, oh, yeah. only pleasure. One and do it Oh, pleasure. Double pain, but... <laughs> the pleasure will outweigh it. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> I know this uh, yeah. sentence. <laughs> Thank you, Mille. Thank you, Mark. But of course, my and, friend. I uh, hope that uh, maybe this is the first time that uh, we have a on a video, you know, German and uh, it's the first time ever that the Germans and 
Americans are on one video together. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys, this is over. And uh, of course, Merry Christmas guys. And Happy New Year. Thank you! <laughs>